My name is Faith, and I have some stories to tell. I'm a boxer bulldog mix. My mom and dad met me while I was being cared for at the Best Friends Animal Society in Utah and decided they wanted to adopt me. Now, I live in Muncie, Indiana, with Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary founders Pamela and Mike. In fact, I'm the ambassador for Grateful Rescue. It's a pretty sweet life. Sometimes I help my dad at the office, while other times I just demand attention from my mom. Tonight, we want you to gather around and listen to fun, interesting stories. We call it Faith's Book Nook. Each week, we pick a local celebrity or special person in the community to read a children's book that has an animal theme. We live stream it here each week. To be honest, I'm not sure what a live stream means. Anyways, make sure you're in your comfy chair because we're about to listen to a great story together at Faith's Book Nook. Hi, my name is Barbara Dussel, and we live at Braintree Park and Horse Farm. We've been here almost 50 years now. We've had lots of horses, and we've had lots of cats, and we have lots of dogs. And as you can tell, I'm probably an animal lover. This is Patches, and Patches came from Grateful Rescue. Um, I just happened to be going over to Pam's one day and, and saw her, and just had to have her and she's just a real sweetheart and a really nice cat and as you can tell I like cats. There's goes another one down here. Rattles the Barn Cat Misfit by Arlene White. Rattles was a barn cat. She lived in a hay mow for two with her two sisters, one brother and her mother. There were lots of other cats that lived there too. Many of them were her cousins and her aunts and her uncles. All of the cats in the haymow were wild. All of them except Rattles, that is. Rattles was different. There weren't many people that lived on the farm, only Grandma and Uncle Dwayne. Grandma and Uncle Dwayne did not play with the cats, so the cats were afraid of humans. All of them except Rattles, that is. Rattles was different. Rattles loved humans. When Uncle Dwayne milked the cows, Rattles would jump onto his lap. When Grandma fed the calves, Rattles would follow her. And when Grandma went for a walk, Rattles would jump on her shoulder, ride along, and purr a purr so big she sounded like a rattle. Rattles was different. One day, two children arrived at the farm. Their names were Linda and Michelle, and they had come to visit Grandma. Kitty, shouted, shouted Linda as she crawled out of the van. Grandma, do you have any new baby kittens? I sure do, smiled Grandma. There's a litter of four kittens in the haymow. They're all wild though. All of them except one, that is. That one was Rattles, of course. Rattles was different. Linda and Michelle shouted with excitement. They loved cats. Linda ran to the barn, crawled up the ladder to the haymow, and immediately began to look for kittens. All of the cats began to run. Rattles' two sisters ran, her brother ran, and her mother ran. All of her aunts, uncles, and cousins ran. All of her friends ran. Danger, they all guessed. There's a human here. They all crawled into some holes between the straw bales to hide. All of them, except Rattles, that is. Rattles was different. I like humans for Rattles, with a rattly purr that was so loud her whole body shook. Humans are nice. Why, this human is a child like me. I bet she would have fun to play with. Rattles put her tail straight up in the air, waddled over to Linda, and purred some more. Kitty, yelled Linda as she picked up Rattles. Linda held Rattles close to her body as she carried her down the ladder into Grandma's house. Rattles wasn't afraid. Rattles was different. Michelle greeted Linda and Rattles at the door. Let me hold her, let me hold her, she cried. Linda let Michelle take the cat. Rattles again shook with her rattling purr. This 
Mouse Cat's name must be Rattle, said Michelle. Her purr sounds like a rattle. Mom, Dad, listen to Rattle's purr. Oh, we got four out of five. Linda, Michelle, and her mom and dad stayed at Grandma's house for three days. Every morning, they would bring Rattles to the house and play with her all day. Every night, they would bring Rattles to the hay mow so she could come back with her family. There was an uproar in the cat community during the nights. Rattles, the other cats warned, you can't trust humans. You have to run where the children come. They're dangerous. But Rattles would only reply, they're not dangerous. They're fun and they're nice. They play string with me. They dress me in doll clothes. They feed me milk. Rattles wasn't afraid. Rattles was different. On the fourth morning, though, when Linda went to visit Rattles at the hay bow, she had tears in her eyes. Rattles, she said, today we have to go back home to the city. I will take you to Michelle for a few minutes so we can say goodbye. When Michelle saw Rattles, she cried too. Rattles, I love you. I wish you could come to the city with us. Rattles was sad. She wished she could come too. She didn't know what it was like in the city, but she didn't want to be like the other barn cats. Rattles was different. It just wasn't the same for Rattles after the girls left. She missed Linda and Michelle. She missed playing on a string with them. She missed having them put those funny little doll clothes on her. But most of all, she missed all the attention that they gave her. She felt, well, she felt special. That was it. She felt special around them. Oh, sure, Rattles played with the other cats, but they were dull by comparison. They were different. Rattles was sad. Rattles, Rattles, come on, Rattles, cheer up. Let's play, run through the straw bales, said one of her sisters. But Rattles shook her head, no. Boring, she thought to herself. Rattles, Rattles, let's play hiss and spit at each other, said one of the other sisters. No, no thank you, said Rattles. It's stupid, she thought to herself. Oh. Rattles. Let's play stare at the dog, said one of her friends. No, that's okay, said Rattles. Rattles shook her head and thought to herself, they sure are different. The day started getting colder and Rattles was getting sick. Her nose was running, her eyes were running, her stomach hurt. Rattles felt miserable. Grandma even noticed. Oh dear, said Grandma. The girls will be upset if something happens to Rattles. Grandma picked up Rattles and carried her to the car. Rattles, I'm afraid we're going to have to take you to the vet. When Grandma returned home from the veterinary, she kept Rattles in the house to keep her warm and had some special medicine to give her with an eyedropper. Rattles could hardly swallow it. <clears throat> Rattles was only in the house for two days when she heard some familiar voices. Happy Thanksgiving, Grandma! Rattles, you're here! You look sick. It was Linda and Michelle. Rattles tried to purr, but her throat was too sore. The girls were again having a three-day stay at Grandma's. They played with Rattles a lot, but they held her Rest a lot too. <laughs> they were ready to go back to the city on the fourth morning when disaster struck. Rattle's brother was badly hurt by the farm dog. <clears throat> the humans tried to help him, but when Uncle Dwayne tried to catch him, he would only hide. Everyone could only hope for the best. Mom, Dad, the kid cried, can Rattles please come home with us? Please, we don't want her to get hurt by the farm dog, too. But we have a puppy at home, replied Dad. 
Our puppy is friendly and gentle, though. Please? Well, okay, replied Dad. Grandma packed Rattle's medicine in the box she had been sleeping in while in the house. Everyone piled into the van. Rattle's got to sit in the front seat on Mom's lap. It was the longest ride Rattle's ever had. They rode and rode and rode. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. I don't know, thought Rattle's to herself. This is really long and boring for a sick cat. Things changed after five hours. Suddenly, there were bright lights shining all over in the dark. There were more buildings than Rattles could ever have imagined. And cars, there were cars. And so many cars that looked almost piled on top of one another. Rattles sat at attention, watching out the window. This was exciting. Now this was different. Rattles knew she was almost at her new home when the family stopped at someone's house to pick up the family's playful, friendly puppy. They then went to a grocery store to get some cat food. When the van stopped again in another driveway, Rattles knew she was at her new home and started to purr. She could hardly wait to investigate the inside of the pretty red brick house. Yes. It sure was going to be different in the city, but then Rattles was different to the end. That was so beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Was. Several uh, several comments I saw come in already. Uh, uh, Katie said stories like this make me so emotional, uh, and Michelle said she's going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it was it was so touching. Yes, very much. So um, I'm KJ, and of course, joining uh, me, I'm the, I'm the Kitty Correspondent for Pet Pals TV, and the the lovely woman who is working all of the magic. Uh, to make Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary uh, such an amazing place uh, for pets that need homes is Pamela. How are you doing uh, tonight? Hi, good. How are you? Oh, uh, I love your background. It's beautiful. Oh, this is my barn. This is my barn backdrop. Oh, so appropriate for tonight. Don't mind my cat there. <laughs> no, I love it. And I've got my, it's not my kitty, but it's my dog, Gizmo. Aww. <laughs> He's an well, old guy. We've had oh. him for many years. I think he's about 13. He is so beautiful. I am. Uh, I, I was loving seeing all of Barb's calico cats. Actually, this uh, weekend on Pet Pals TV, I'll be doing a story about some of the myths about calico cats and how they get their colors and why they're all uh, so different. So I was like, I need to. I need to put Barb's cats in there. And you have a calico cat too, don't you, Pamela? I do. I have a couple of them. I have. I have one that's blind, and she's beautiful. And um, and then I've got a little stinker. I mean, they've they've kind of got an attitude. I don't know if that's a thing with calicos, or if it's just the way my cats are. But my calicos seem to want to rule the roost. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that is uh, that is very similar. However, this weekend on Pet Pals TV, we're going to be meeting calicos that kind of break that mold, that mm. do not have the catitude that they are known for. So, oh, I like that word, catitude. Yes. <laughs> And since you are in the barn and the story was about the barn cat, we actually uh, have a, a special guest with us tonight to help us learn a little bit more about barn cat programs and uh, actually why why it's so important to our neighborhood. Dawn with Indy Neighborhood Cats, how are you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are you, KJ? Good. Thank you so much Hi. for being here. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for everything you do for the community. Um, would you start off by uh, kind of introducing everyone to Indie Neighborhood Cats and what your mission is? Sure. Indie Neighborhood Cats is a 501c3 nonprofit here in Indianapolis. And our goal 
and mission is to improve the life of cats that live outside in our neighborhoods. So those cats might be someone's pet that got loose. It might be an indoor outdoor cat. It might be a cat that was born outside. And it's our mission to be out in the field and make sure that we return pets to owners and make sure that all of the cats outside are living happy, healthy and fixed lives. Is there anything that you, um, you know, anything in particular that you want people to know, you know, when they come across a cat? I think a lot of times people want to be helpful, but maybe they don't know the best ways to be helpful with in that sure. situation. Absolutely. One of the most important things to remember if you find a cat outside is that cat may belong uh, in your neighborhood. Um, and so one thing that you want to look for is a cat that has a left ear that's cropped. It's cropped nice and flat, and that indicates that it's part of a trap, neuter, return program, which means that it was trapped and vaccinated and returned outside. Um, we don't necessarily have to assume that all cats have to go to a rescue to get home. Um, one of the other things that's really important to know is you can go to any veterinarian's office as long as it's open and take a cat in and they can scan that cat for a microchip. And that microchip will tell you whether or not that pet was owned or rescued. And it will actually tell you the rescue that that microchip came from so that if you can't get a hold of the owners, you can actually get that cat back to the rescue that adopted that cat. It is, it is really amazing that, uh, you know, we, we can, we have that technology that, and it really doesn't cost very much to get your cat microchipped. And, and I always tell people, you know, the first thing to do when you've adopted a cat is get that microchip because you never know. You don't know when your cat might end up outside and you're counting on a stranger to make sure that they understand I should take this cat and check for a microchip and get them back. Um, uh, Barb earlier, uh, or sorry, Pamela earlier in the show, um, we were seeing some pictures of what these um, what these uh, winter structures, if you will, these uh, shelters that indie neighborhood cats makes. And and you had sort of a question about the design. So I think you know it would be great to know, Dawn. Uh, you know, sort of what what we should do or how we get these shelters and certainly uh, how you make the circles so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I couldn't do that without something to stick in there. <laughs> yep. Well, we do, we do, we rely on a nice little, what they call a, um, a hole drill. So there's a hole drill bit that you can get for a power drill and we get the cat guys out there and they'll take their the hole drill that's six inches in diameter and they'll they'll plug it right into the styrofoam and make a nice pretty hole for the cat to get into. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. How many but of those you do, you, do you make? Um, well, let's see. This year about thirteen hundred have been made wow. and distributed throughout central Indiana. Um, we have we're always looking for suppliers. So if someone works at a medical uh, facility or a food facility where they have shelf, uh, coolers that they get like this, um, please make sure to get in touch because we do store those down in Johnson County um, at the Humane Society of Johnson County. And then we do these nice big shelter builds to make sure rescues and organizations can pick up shelters throughout the winter. And Don, I have a question. Do you do you believe that whenever you find a, a kitty that's that's wild and obviously feral, not to take it to the shelter, to let it be, maybe feed it, take care of it the best you can, because they usually face certain death once they're turned into a shelter because they're unadoptable? Well, that's an interesting question. Here in Indianapolis, that is not the case. Um, our city oh. shelter has a fantastic shelter neuter return program. So if a cat is not adoptable and it does enter the shelter, but it is healthy and thriving in the place where that cat was picked up or maybe brought into the shelter, um, that, kid is, that cat is fixed, vaccinated, and returned to its okay. location. Now, that began because of legislation in the city of Indianapolis, and it is not the case in all areas of Indiana. I know um, there are rescues or that are certainly advocating for that because it is less expensive to fix a cat 
than it is to take the cat, shelter it, and then, um, you know, perhaps euthanize for space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to, um, you know, maybe they saw the, I, I saw some comments already. Uh, Monica was, said, wow, uh, great work on those shelters. That's amazing. She also said, I hadn't really thought about that. I'm going to go get my baby's microchipped. There it is. Now mm -hmm. I'll take my babies to get microchipped. Um, but if somebody oh, was seeing those shelters and maybe they, they do manage a colony, obviously, if, if you are taking care of any kind of cats outside, we want to make sure that you um, uh, get them uh, fixed. And, and we've got so many great groups here in Indy that you can reach out to to find out. But if they wanted to build a shelter like this, what are some of the things that um, is it, what are the do's and don'ts to make sure that uh, you're providing the proper shelter for a neighborhood cat? Sure. And honestly, anything is better than nothing. Um, if the cat doesn't have a place to go when it does get cold and rainy and snowy, they will find places that are less desirable, like a crawl space in a home, um, up in attics and in garages. Um, but the first thing to remember is water is not a cat's friend when it comes to bedding. And so even if you find a couple of cardboard boxes and uh, you put one box inside the other, you can line it with whatever you can find, newspaper, um, you know, towels, things that are that you could discard that could provide some insulation, but you'll always want to cover that with something that's waterproof, whether it's a nice huge uh, lawn bag um, or a tarp of some kind that will prevent the water from um, soaking into the fibers that are uh, insulating the shelter. So we like Sterilite totes because they're already plastic. Um, and for bedding, we always ask if people can use straw. Straw is nice and hollow and it acts as a nice little insulator for cat's body heat and it retains it. And so the cat will burrow into the straw and stay nice and warm. And it also repels water. Hay is used for feeding and it absorbs moisture and can actually freeze and cause hypothermia to a kitty. Wow. Well, thank you, Dawn. I think, um, you know, this, it's, it's fabulous to know this information, but I also think it's fabulous that there are people watching who had no idea the work that Indy Neighborhood Cats is doing for so many of our cats. Uh, so you see the website there, IndyNeighborhoodCats.org. If you'd like to get involved, if you have questions about what they do, questions about the shelters, question about a cat in your neighborhood and what to do. Um, they're just, I, I, I can't say enough good things about about Dawn and this group. Uh, I'm in the Facebook group. Absolutely. And, and, every, and everyone's so helpful. Everyone's so nice. And um, you know, I think that you understand that, you know, we're, we're all in this together and we're all just trying to do the best that we can for, for our neighborhood cats. Uh, well, I think uh, we got some pictures, right, Pamela, of some uh, some beautiful, amazing barn cats that we, we can do. share with we, our viewers. Yep, we asked our viewers to submit some photos of their barn cats, and we have some gorgeous shots to show you. <laughs>
Look at those beautiful babies. <laughs> and they do uh, such good things. They keep the rodents away and they they really keep the barn up to up to, free of pests. They eat yes. bugs and, and so forth. So any farmers that need, um, we have a volunteer that gets names from farmers and any farmers that need extra barn cats, always let us know. We'll, we'll get them and we'll train you how to, to get them set so that they stay in their place. It takes a couple weeks to get them used to their barn. But um, if you need some barn cats, we'll bring you some. That's actually how I, I got introduced to cats. I, I grew up on a farm and I was I was in charge of the cats and the calves. <laughs> and they, they do. They serve a very, very important uh, purpose. And so it, it is great to have them around as as mousers. And as we've learned, they're great to uh, to have around for companionship often as well. The horses um, love them, too. Yeah, I right. walk along the horse gates and the horses enjoy the company of the kitty cats. Uh, I want to bring, if we can bring Dawn back in here for a second, because Monica has a question um, that I think that uh, Dawn will be able to answer better than, than you or I, Pamela. Mm -hmm. uh, Dawn, Monica is wondering, what about mites getting into the straw or would it be too cold to be concerned about that? That's a great question. Um, if you're concerned about any sort of flea or um, tick or any kind of critter that has an exoskeleton, you can go to the local feed stores or your local pet store and find something called food grade diatomitis earth. And it's a very fine ground powder that gets into the exoskeleton of any critter that might walk into the shelter. And it prevents them, it basically dehydrates them naturally and the, they die. Um, but the, it's totally safe for cats and any animal. Wow, Excellent. I didn't even know about that. That's really cool. It's just a powder yep. you put on the straw, right? Yes, ma'am. Yep, you sprinkle it into bedding. You can use it around food dishes to keep insects away from food outside. You can use it around the perimeter of your house to help with ants. I mean, there's it's really all purpose. Anything that has an exoskeleton that's an insect. I'm going to have to remember that. Yeah, it is great. It's great. We use it around the uh, the outside of our house. Uh, way better than any kind of, you know, like pesticides or anything like that. It's it's mm -hmm. it's very safe for uh, for pets, and we have ducks, so that's part of the reason that we uh, make sure that that's we're doing everything question. safe. Did you say you have ducks? I have ducks. Yes, <laughs> that's oh a different God. show, Pamela. Okay, you're gonna have Reading with ducks. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, Dawn, thank you so much again. Uh, Indie Neighborhood Cats. Uh, look them up on Facebook. Go to indieneighborhoodcats.org. Um, they are doing amazing work here in Indy. And you know what? If you're watching and you're not in Indianapolis, but you still have questions, they're so friendly and so kind, and they will uh, assist in directing you to. The nearest resource that you need. So again, thank you very much, Dawn. Thanks for taking care of all of our our barn cats, our neighborhood cats, uh, and thanks for being here on on Book Nook with us. Uh, coming up, Pamela, we had so much fun with our last bingo game. <laughs> uh, we are planning a special night, and this can be your Valentine's Day date night. <laughs> That sounds like lots of fun. Doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Sunday, February 14th will be our next bingo night. And we want you to get registered, gratefulbingo.com. It's uh, it's free to play. Uh, I, ke I kept the cage and the in the balls, so I'm going to be spinning them around. I actually, Pamela, have been getting the cats used to the sound because that was oh, the yeah. first time I got it out. They were actually, I thought they'd be like, oh, look at all of the ping pong balls. I want to play. And they were like, that's loud. Oh, they didn't like it. <laughs> So, uh, so we're getting them out and getting them used to it a little bit more, but it's, uh, it's so much fun to play. We have prizes um, and we're actually looking for couples who can tell their story about how they met through a pet. So if you are a couple or you know a couple 
that um, met at a dog park, met because you were uh, doing, you know, cat rescue work, like something to do with a, with a pet. We'd love to uh, share some, uh, some couples love stories that all started because of our, our love of our pets. So uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us on, on Facebook here, Grateful Rescue or my page KJ on air and, and tell us about that love story and, and you could be featured. Yeah, that sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else going on that we should know about with uh, with Grateful Rescue and and the wonderful work you're doing right now, Pamela? Well, we're just working on on getting the groundbreaking in the spring. We're doing the permits and getting the uh, getting the bids in and starting starting all that up. Other than that, we're just in our phase of getting together our committee members. If anybody wants to volunteer or or serve on a committee reach out to us at gratefulrescue.org we would love to put you to work is is that something right now pamela that if someone wanted to assist um could do so virtually um you know it, or are you looking for you know more hands-on type of volunteers we right can now? do both we have so many different things that we could tackle virtually or in person we will take it all and appreciate it so much all right. Fantastic. And of course, if you are looking to add to your home, you can check out some of the adoptables at gratefulrescue.org as well. Uh, we are looking forward to seeing you for another book nook next Sunday night and keep Valentine's Day on your calendar. If you love pets, it's going to be the perfect way to spend it. Uh, another grateful bingo night still to come. It's so good to see you, Pamela. Yes, you too. Okay. All right. You guys Thank have you a good so night. Absolutely. Have a great night. Thank you to everybody who's watching and thank you to Pamela and everybody doing all that great work for Grateful Rescue. Yes. Thank you. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.